You know what I like to do? Talk into a microphone? Yeah, and also <laughs> get in on the action with Have sports a big interaction. Head. Yeah, wear bare feet in the freezing cold. <laughs> Be a dad. Freaking wear V-necks that are actually it's not a V-neck. Okay. Sorry. Um, sports interaction, NHL, NBA, MLB, so much more. It's the friend I don't have. Clearly, uh, crazy odds, best live and play. Download the app in Ontario. You can use the QR code at the bottom of the screen, or you can head to sportsinteraction.com/stpn to get started. Nineteen plus. Please, please play responsibly and get better friends. Just yell at the computer. He does that too. Their, their cruelest act as an era was to finally win around and turn into a complete absolute pumpkin their cruelest it, and they saved final the, act they saved the, the 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 worst for last on that one yep. their cruelest and final act as a team's era was to show us what they could be and immediately take it away. I if, thought, if they just show up versus Florida, like we're probably not sitting here saying this. They, the, if they lose in six in a relatively normal way. Yep. <laughs> if they don't go down 3-0. They don't lose normally, this team. Or they didn't. Yeah. Now, I, I wanted, I did want to throw this out. There's, a, there's one piece of breaking news, but the first thing is, you know that meme from the Avengers? It's like, did you do it? Yes, but what it costs? Uh, but, <laughs> at, at what cost? And then, and then everything. And it's John Tavares scoring the OT winner against Tampa. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's so true. Now Kyle Cushman is reporting. Kyle Cushman, who is one of our favorite up and coming uh, reporters Someone for the score. Him. Uh, Greg Moore, AJ McLean, and John cow. Snowden will not be back as the Toronto Marlies coaches in twenty three twenty four. That has also just been announced. So I know there's a lot of Marlies fans who will really enjoy that. Yeah. Well, I don't. But don't you think that that's interesting? Because who, um, who are the three names? Sorry, I know uh, Greg, uh, Greg, uh, Greg Moore, um, uh, AJ McLean of the Backstreet Boys, and John Snowden. Actually, John Snowden. John Snowden. Yeah, he, he knows nothing. You have to fire him. Well, exactly. Wow. So, so I wondered. That's so, a Game of Thrones reference. Uh, yeah, you've never seen it. Horsey HL on Twitter said, there's a lot of terrible things. I'm paraphrasing his tweet because it was a lot funnier than what I'm going to give you right now. But there's a lot of terrible things that could happen. Or the Leafs could just promote Brandon Pridham. But let's focus on the terrible. <laughs> and I wonder, well, I wonder if that's just what's going on here. I, uh, unless because, they already have a candidate. Well, because like a guy who they're going to hire today or Tuesday. Uh, Pridham has to. He has to. Like you've been setting plans in motion for months. And he has interestingly not come up as somebody who's been granted permission, meaning that, like, you know, other they teams... They must be paying him a fortune. That's what I'm saying, but I yeah. think other teams would, would call the Leafs and ask for permission, and the Leafs are famous for, hey, we're not going to stand in your way. They're not pulling the Treliving thing in Calgary where they're like, no, you decided you don't walk away, so you can't have a job somewhere else. Uh, they're, they're not letting Treliving talk to anybody. I'm wondering if... That is... The, fuck the flames for yeah, that, by the way. Oh. For, for doing that to Brad Treliving. That's such a shit... Like, after a decade of work... Regardless dick. of what you think of the job dick the move. guy did, uh, you're preventing him from getting a job in a summer where so many uh, jobs have freed up. You guys suck. And I wish more hockey guys who always rip that sort of behavior would rip it for what it is. Garbage. Uh, Kyle or, or Scott Wheeler said in Kyle Dubas's five season as Leafs jam, they averaged 106 points <gasps> before he took over their, their points record in a season was 105. And he was the AGM of that 105 point team. Uh, unprecedented run of regular season success that des deserves a ton of credit, even if he doesn't fit, even if he didn't finish the job. And I agree with that. That's torture. But I think that's torture. When, when Leaf fans look back on this era, I think you're going to look back on it as great and torture. Yeah, there was no results. Like at the end of the day, we never got the conference finals run. We never got the big run to the Stanley Cup. We never got a championship. None of that. There were absolutely no results during the Dubas era. And I forget how young he was when he took over yeah. as assistant general manager. He still in his 20s. He began in that position in 2014 in July, and he was 28 years old at that time. Wow. And now he's no longer working in the organization. He's only 37. Th three years removed from being named the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds GM at 25. And people in OHL circles were criticizing that hiring for him being too young for that. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I look at the Leafs organization now and I know that 
Shanahan's not going to make that same mistake with somebody who's relatively inexperienced. You know, I assume they'll go with somebody with a lot of experience. And that person might be Brandon Pridham because he's been in the organization for a lot longer than uh, Dubas. He's yeah. been in the game of hockey just because he's... Uh, really? Like, Pridham, yeah, he's. I don't think so. He's been in the game of hockey longer. Oh, in than, in the game. In, Sorry, you said in the organization. Oh, in in the organization or in the game of hockey longer than Dubas, just because he's older. Like he's, I think he's like fifty now or whatever. Um, and I think that's that's a good candidate, but I don't think they're going to make the same if it's a mistake. You know, I don't think they'll make the same mistake again in that they'll hire somebody who's a tad in experience in doing the, this for the first time because there are some serious questions here they got to solve with the roster and the first one being you got to have a good relationship with austin matthews and get him re-signed before uh july 1st i have a question mm. if you have you just trained somebody else's great general manager kyle yeah have you just trained kyle by trial by fire to go and be fantastic oh, the kyle dubas revenge tour is going to be absolutely ridiculous Feels like that, doesn't it? Absolutely mm -hmm. ridiculous. We're going to come back to your point there, Jesse. No, and, but, uh, and by the way, no one is going to hold it against him if he breaks his word and GM somewhere else next season. Yeah, I think that's no that's important because I think that when I, was, when I was saying earlier that this feels like the end of a Kyle Dubas era and if he stuck around, it would have been the next evolution because it seemed like at this point, he's finally learned. He's finally learned what the process does and what it doesn't do. Yep. And you had to turn the corner and be willing to make big changes. So... Either if he takes the year off or whatever, but if he goes to another team, he's going to take all of those things that he would he learned here and he would the changes he would have made and put them to this new team. And I, I, that's why I was like, I wanted to see what he would do in the new Cal Dubas era where yeah. he's making big sweeping changes. We're and talking about doesn't have as much bureaucracy above him to get yeah. done. Right. We're talking like about that. all the things that he did well and did poorly, and we're trying to weigh the pros and cons. I don't think he was let go for those things. No. Um, I think he was let go because of a press conference, and that's absolutely wild. And we still don't. We don't. We don't really, know that. And we'll we don't probably, know that as of this uh, recording. I mean, yeah. but yeah, it does seem that way. I'm, I'm with you. But I just want to. I want to throw it out there. Shani could come on and say something explosive at three o'clock, and we don't know. So I do want to put that. You know, what are those called? Asterisks. It is twelve forty three. Fisher, by the way, is, is he having a fun time? Yeah, he's, he's, he called, and I just texted back. We know. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, I, I tweeted one thing. I just said we're recording. Um, uh, also lost in all this, and this happened yesterday. R the Rangers did get permission to speak with uh, one of the Leafs coaches. Um, oh, yeah, this so is not good news. Uh, Spencer Carberry mm -hmm. um, was given permission. Uh, he is apparently speaking with Anaheim, New York, and Washington. Yeah, he was always going to be a guy who. Uh, I mean, one of the teams I would like him to speak to is Toronto. Well, I, uh, I wonder now if, if if they've made this call on Dubas, do they have the succession plan ready to go and keeps out too? Uh, it's it's possible. So Carberry won, I believe it was coach of the year with the Hershey Bears, and he was with the Leafs for what, two years? Mm -hmm. And it was an interesting dynamic behind the bench because I think a lot of people thought because he was taking over the power play from Manny Malhotra, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. um, this means Manny's gone. Well, Manny was Manny's still there. Yeah, um, they got a ton of guys uh, behind the bench to help Keefe out. Um, it's no surprise that he's talking to Washington on account of that was their farm team that he won Coach of the Year with, and guys who win those awards tend to get a promotion at some point. Um, and I'm surprised. I'm surprised he lasted two years. Okay, I want to ask you guys a question, just a hypothetical. Not really hypothetical, more like a dream board, okay? And Jesse, I, I want to start with you on this one. Mm -hmm. Next year, what type of general manager and coach do you want to see for the Toronto Maple Leafs? What's the general manager's priority? What do you, and, and I'm, I'm going to ask you both the same question. So I'll, I'll, what kind of GM, what's the mold, I guess? Is it in the same mold as Dubas, but different? Is it somebody completely different who values different things? How do you how do you think that the Leafs ideally take the next step forward here? What type of person? I don't know what Eric Tulski looks like. I can Google him. <laughs> I I I you guys just keep throwing out that name. No 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 no. But but I'm I'm using that. I know what there's his moves reason, look like. There's a there's a reason 
Uh, it's got very I'm, I'm, nice curly hair. There's a reason I'm using that. Um, I don't think I've ever heard his voice. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen his face. I don't know anything he's ever said. I know his work. Brandon Shanahan's been here since 2013, I think. So, you know, we're heading into a really tumultuous era. They're going to trade probably one of the faces of the franchise. They're going to make a lot of moves. And you can't just make those moves and not communicate with your fans. Right? So mm -hmm. you can't just make those moves and keep a guy behind the scenes. It's time for Brandon Shanahan to step up and be the face of these things, I think. Masai like? Yes. And if you're going to hire a guy, um, whether it's Tulski or someone else, um, you need to let them go do their thing. And they're new and innocent. You're the dartboard now. This is your final move. This is all you have left. There's If this doesn't work, there's the, no reason to keep you. You're the patsy. You're the... So you're the fight. very, very deserving Patsy. You've been here for a decade. Your guy just got shit canned. Your guy who you picked over Lou Lamorello, and I'm not trying to say that was the wrong move. I'm just trying to say that was quite the swing you took, Brendan. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, to the praise of the show, I'm sure. But that was the move you made. You have to wear everything. I just feel like Dubis took on so much mm -hmm. and maybe that was his own doing. Maybe that was the team. I don't know. You can't put the general manager through that. Um, I don't want the Brian Burke sound bites. Um, well, I mean, they're, they're highly entertaining uh, as a fan and working in the media and everything. But I think... This needs to be a guy we barely see. Do you guys remember? What we, or woman. What do we used to say about woman Lou Lamorello? We barely see. And Jesse, I want to get to your answer as well. What do we used to say about Lou Lamorello press conferences? Uh, oh, the master of using a thousand words to say nothing. Bingo. That would be nice. Jesse, what do you want to say? What do you think? I want to see Brendan Printer as the next general manager. I think it's, it starts and ends with him. I think it's his job to lose. This is somebody who was the director of uh, the Central Registry. Uh, that's where he, he like came up. He, he came Didn't he up work on the CBA too? Or yeah. was that yeah. Lawrence Gilman? Yeah, no. It was uh, it was Pridham. Pridham, Pridham did some work on the uh, CBA as well. Like he He knows every GM in this league. He's he's been Kyle's right hand man in building the roster. And sometimes when you take the guy who's right next to the guy, he's able to see the flaws that the main guy has. And if Pridham can be the guy who's making the edits on all the work that Kyle has done, I think he's the perfect guy for the job. What do you got? What do you what are you trying to do, Steve? Nothing. Don't worry about it. No, I there's think, lots of news. Is I wonder, off. I wonder, Jesse. So when you when you're making a change like this, though. With Pridham, the the instant criticism from the people that hated Dubas is going to be this is Dubas part two. He's he's in an echo chamber. That's he's it. He's going to look at this team. Uh, do you think that there's not going to be ignorant writ articles written tomorrow? What, uh, yeah. So why worry about it? OK, but I think that you can you can ask the question. Let's say you're MLSE board. Mm -hmm. What's going to be different? I think that's a relevant question. I think you yeah, look you. We, we've outlined that this has been the most successful regular season um point in the history of the Toronto Maple Leafs franchise and all you need to do is duplicate that because you want to keep that going and then create postseason success out of that and I feel like if Brandon Pridham can edit the work of Kyle Dubas in that the way that I thought Kyle was going to do to his own work if he stuck around I feel like Pridham could be to get that job done there isn't I don't feel like there's good there's got to be parts of the roster that have wholesale changes right we need to trade of some of the big core four the head coach, who knows about Keith, if he's coming back, he might be just the guy who has to fall on his sword. Who knows? But there isn't the sake that we're, we need to go through a rebuild in Toronto. Mm -hmm. We're not at that point. It's it's more of a retool where you need to find a formula that works in the postseason where you don't have a showing like you did versus, versus Florida. Jesse, it's, you need to have some sort of postseason success in those five years. And if it just takes tweaks, I think the guy next to the guy who's very smart and can do those tweaks is the right guy for the job.